chose my 11 as a primary 6 from Ibing Primary School. In this lesson, we'll continue with Calculus Chapter 7, Double and Triple Integral. So, for the last lesson, we have a question that is like about the distance between points. Yeah, last time we have a question something like that. But this time we'll have a different question. So let's see what would our different question be. So for all these questions, we're still at double integral. The definite integral. So that means double integral is a type of definite integral. Okay, so right now here we have, you can cut a rope of length 1 into 3 pieces independently. That means these three pieces you randomly cut. Then you choose two points on this rope. So you choose two points to cut it into three pieces. So then you need to calculate the product of the length of these three pieces. Now what is the expected value of this product? So let's see, expected value. Expected value, it means like how many values can there be that you have to divide it by well divide it by so this actually is not like something like the average so it's actually the total well pretty much it's just the average okay so let's see for this rope so for this rope, for example, this line that we have here, so we can cut at, let's say, these two points. So we can call them A and B. So this is A and B. Now, well, we can cut them into like N of these pieces small little pieces well there's a lot a lot of them so maybe because we can cut it into n pieces so we can call this a over n that means a pieces out of n then this can be it goes all the way up to b we call that b over n then of course for the last part that is 1 minus a over n, then minus b over n. Like this. So next. So we already have these three lengths, and this is a, a over n. So this is a, a plus b over n. Okay. So now we know about these. So, we want the expected value. First, let's try to find the total of them. So, this total. Now, this is a little bit tricky. But actually, for this, you need to know about like their lengths. So, about their lengths, because we want the product of these three lengths. So maybe just times them together first. Then after we times them together, because we want the total, so we'll need sigma. Now for this sigma, we want A is from and B is from. So we want to know A is from where to where, B is from where to where. So let's see for this. A, this part. So A it can either be from 0 or so it can be from 0 all the way up to, 
let's just say the whole thing. And then B, it can be from zero all the way up to. Because after we have taken our A, B, it cannot include A. So that means we need N minus A. Then, because this N, we need to show where does it end at. So it actually limits and approaches to infinity, like this. So this is the total. Now for this total, we'll need to divide it by numbers of them. So how many could there be? I know can just have one, split them to one. You can split it into two of them, three of them, four of them, all the way up to n of them. So then you can split them into from one piece all the way up to n pieces. So all the way up to n pieces. That means we actually have one plus two plus plus n. So we have a formula that is total number of numbers times the first number plus the last number then divided by two. So this is, and this is only for the sequence AP arithmetic progression. It is like skip a constant number and it's always the same. So n times n plus 1, this is the number of numbers, this is the first number plus the last number, then divide that by 2. So this 2 can flip up to the top, then for this part it gets to the bottom. So we'll get something like this, and this is our expected value. So for this, that is our expected value, we have now, expected value of this product. It's got to be something to do with integrate. Well, what I know is that sigma, sigma represents adding them up, summing them up, putting them all together. Now, another thing that does a similar thing is the integral. So maybe we could just change from this sigma into integral. Well, we might want to try that. So let's try this. Now, when we change that into an integral, maybe we want to let a over n, let's just say be a x, then b over n be a y. Now, how about dx and dy? So, let me just write this out first. Double integral. We we'll need to know where it goes from and ends at where. Okay, so we know the length is 1. And for y, I know that it needs to use 1 minus the x. So, let me just separate this. We can go first according to this y, then according to the x. So x at last is just from 0 all the way to 1. Then, for the y part, you can go from 0 all the way up to 1 minus x. Like this. Then, so inside here we have 2 times x times y. Bracket 1 minus x minus y. Then dy. So we can have something like this. And then, so at this place, we might want to separate them first. So when we separate them, integrate from 0 to 1 dx, then integral from 0 to 1 minus x, 2xy, dy, 
minus integral from 0 to 1 dx bracket 0 1 minus x then here now it changes a little bit it becomes a 2x square y dy minus integral from 0 to 1 dx integral from 0 to 1 minus x then is 2 x y square dy like this so we can have something like this then at this part what you see we get integrator already with respect to y first so that means we need to use this 2 so you integrate from 0 to 1 then you have a x y square start from 0 to 1 minus x dx okay then next you have to minus so this minus 2 let me put that so integrate from 0 to 1 then you have a x square y square then you start from 0 all the way to 1 minus an x then dx so at this part minus now it changes a little bit with y first because that at last you change it to a y cube so when it changes into a y cube you have a one third so that means minus 2 over 3 integrate from 0 to 1 then is x times y cube the integral from 0 to 1 minus x dx like this so now at this part we can sub them in but for these kinds of questions i actually prefer to expand them yeah i prefer to expand them well you might think expansion makes it so long but let me tell you if you just feel we use x times bracket 1 minus x then a square well i usually expand that to make it simpler yeah so you can integrate from 0 to 1 then at first 1 minus x then square so first is a 1 so x then next is a minus 2x so you have to minus a 2 then integrate from 1 i mean 0 to 1 it, then it is x square dx so then you need a plus plus integrate from 0 to 1 so what you have here is x cubed dx then minus so this 1 minus x square that will still become 1 minus 2x plus x square like this then plus integrate from 0 to 1 so we can have x cubed dx then minus wait but here we have an extra 2 yeah then minus integral from 0 to 1 so x to the power of 4 dx then minus so 1 minus x then a q so first is a 1 there then is a negative 3x so negative 3x negative, negative negative positive then 3 and that over 3 will simplify so 2 integrate from 0 to 1 then x square dx okay then you can minus because the next is a minus minus 2 then integrate from 0 to 1 times x cubed dx then next is plus so you have a 2 over 3 the integral from 0 to 1 there's an x to the power of 4 then dx so like this i can write that over here 
So in Cartesian, you realize all these terms are now very, very simple. If you don't know how to integrate, then... Okay, so let's see. The first term, x. So x, it will add up to be an x squared. So that means you'll have a half. Then you have to minus. So x squared will end up with an x to the power of 3, that is an x cubed. So that means you have a 2 over 3 x cubed, then plus. So here we will have, end up with an x to the power of 4. So 1 over 4, x to the power of 4. Then here is, end up with x cubed. So minus 1 third x cubed. Okay, then next here, you have uh, x to the power of 4, so over 4, that means it's a half times x to the power of 4. Okay, wait, there's no dx here. So, but yeah, this step, let's mark it first. So, then, next is the x to the power of 5, so you have a 1 over 5. So, minus a 1 over 5, x to the power of 5. Okay, so this part will not add it. So this, so x square times a half. That means you have to minus a one third. Then there you have a x square. Then plus two of this, so there is a x cubed. So you need to divide there by a three. So you have a two over three. x cubed. Okay, then x at that place, x cubed becomes x to the power of 4. So that means you need to divide that by a 4. So it's a minus half. So half times x to the power of 4. Then you have x to the power of 5. So it's plus 2 over 15 x to the power of 5. Then you need to start from 0 to 1. Okay, so we have this part now. When you try to see which of them, okay, let's cancel out. Very obvious these two. And very obvious these two. Any more? Okay, so then next to simplify is this part can simplify with this part. Okay, this can simplify. Yeah. And these can simplify. So we can also sub them in at the same time. Maybe I would like to sub them in. Okay. So that means it's a half plus one quarter minus one third minus well, minus one fifth, and this part it becomes so. This is a minus three over fifty. That means it's a minus one over fifty. Then here is a minus one third, and there that's about it. So common denominator. Common denominator you get okay fifteen times four. That's a sixty. So this is a thirty. Then plus. This happens 15 minus 2 of 20, that's a minus 40, then minus of 4. So you'll see 3 and 1, 40. Okay, 40 cancel out. Then 5 minus 4, that's a 1. So at last, the answer that I got here is a 1 over 60. So in here, answer 1 over 60. And this is after that. You should also get 1 over 60. So actually for this lesson, this part is the most important part that you need to understand and also expected value. So about these expect, expectancy, we actually can learn more about these in probability and statistics. So right now in this lesson, we can end here first. 
Okay, so I hope that you can understand. And if you like our video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And this is Calculus, Chapter 7, Double and Triple Integral. So see you in the next lesson and thank you for your watching.